Welcome, beloved. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, fortnightly message, our mini message called Bread of Life, mini message. And uh, we're glad you could be with us today. If you've got your Bibles with you, please turn to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, which is in the New Testament. We want to read about six verses there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll read verse 14 to 19. Verse 14 to 19. If you don't have your Bible with you, you can always look on the screen. Right, here we go. Verse 14. Listen very carefully. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, Ooh. and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Think of the dark world being in the moment. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 is our verse today. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Up to the hour reading, beloved. I've titled this morning's message <laughs> with a question again. What songs are you speaking? What songs are you speaking? Research has shown that singing can actually be good for you on many levels. It may help lower stress, boost immunity and lung function. Enhance memory, Ooh, I better start singing more. Improve mental health and help you cope with physical and emotional pain. One of the best things about singing is that you don't have to be good at it to reap the rewards, as you can see that security guy <laughs> enjoying himself there while he's singing and dancing. Singing is a natural antidepressant. Yes, a natural antidepressant. Singing is known to release endorphins, which is the feel-good brain chemical that makes you feel uplifted and happy. In addition, scientists have identified a tiny organ in the ear called the saculus, which responds to the frequencies created by singing. <laughs> so why sing then is the question. Well, just for introduction, before we get to the answers there, the spirit-filled life produces music, as one person said. Whether he is a, has a good voice or cannot carry a tune, the spirit-filled Christian is a singing Christian even while driving a car. Nothing is more indicative of a fulfilled life, a contented soul and a happy heart than the expression of it in song. So again, why sing? Three reasons. Singing, firstly, is a response to the word of the Lord. It's a response the word of the Lord. Colossians 3, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to the Lord. We must always have a new song in our hearts. When we worship the Lord. For what he has done. He's doing now. And what are your wonderful things he will do also in the future for us. A second reason we should sing is. It's actually clearly a commandment. 
in the assembly of other Christians in the New Testament. Once again, our verse, Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3, admonishing one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You know, the speaking and admonishing of one another is through the act of singing psalms and spiritual songs and hymns to one another. You actually sing to each other. That is why it's through congregational singing together that brings unity of mind and heart to the congregation. We need congregational singing because it's a form of prayer and worship. <laughs> you know, people sing together in the strangest places. Look at, think of sporting events. The fans sing enthusiastically about the desire to beat the opponent. People sing at weddings and even at funerals. Similarly, our congregational singing tends to bind us together. And therefore, it's more effective than simply just reciting words in unison. The third reason why we sing, it was actually taught in the Old Testament as well. You sing something old. Something new. You can always sing an old song with a new meaning. Think about it. You know there are three psalms in the Old Testament with precisely starting with those words. It's 96, 98 and 149. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto him a new song. You know I read a little story of a pastor who once said, I love to sing, he says. I especially like to sing songs of praise to God. Sadly, he said, this hasn't always been the case. I can remember growing up, singing the hymns, thinking, oh, these things are dull and boring. I do remember one, the, the first time that my heart rejoiced upon singing a hymn. The song was Amazing Grace. I'd sung the song many times before. But you know, during my first year at college, God marvelously saved me. And for the first time in my life, I began seriously walking in Christ. Then one Sunday during a service, I sang the song Amazing Grace. And you know, for the first time in my life, I was the blind person who now saw. I was the lost one who was now found. I was the wretch who had deeply and profoundly experienced the grace of God. My spirit stirred within my heart and almost with tears in my eyes I sang Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Beloved, are you saved yet? Do you also know of a day that you committed your lost life to Jesus Christ? If so, then you can also sing this song, Amazing Grace, with joy. But come and join us as we sing something old, but something new. Something old, but gold. And exalt God Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, together with the Bible Baptist bunch, as they sing, How Great Thou Art. God bless. <laughs>